Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Dory Freeman called Letters Never Read. You know, there's a part of me that's always a little bit surprised that Dory Freeman doesn't get more buzz. And then I go back to that self-titled debut album from last year, and I remember why instantly. And believe it or not, that's not a diss or anything. Dory Freeman's debut album was one of many fantastic records from women in indie country in 2016. Anchored in terrific layered and textured production from Teddy Thompson, son of the legendary Richard Thompson, and bound together with Freeman's writing that was subtle enough to soothe, but sharp enough to sting when you would least expect it. But you know what? Subtle, plain-spoken indie country records like this can be pretty easy to ignore, especially coming from the grassroots side, and especially given the understated presentation. At least until you go back to the album and remind yourself exactly why it's so damn good to begin with, which you can bet I absolutely did before listening to Letters Never Read, her follow-up that was just released. Now, I did have a couple reservations about this album. More than a few songs were covers this time around, and yet it was only a 10-song release that somehow was even shorter than the last two 10 song records I covered on this show, clocking in less than a half hour. But on the other hand, it wasn't like Dory Freeman didn't pack her last album with plenty of detail on its short length, so what I find on Letters Never Read? Well, it's pretty damn good. And pretty much exactly the course you would expect for an artist like Dory Freeman on a sophomore project. More diverse tone, showcasing more sides of her personality, a little bit brighter overall, and maybe just a shade not quite as great as her debut. Oh, don't get me wrong, you'll definitely have a fair bit of fun with this. But as a whole, Letters Never Read can feel a tad slight, and I find myself wishing a fair bit, a little bit more every time that I'm finished with it, that there was a little more to it. I kind of left wanting more. Now granted, a lot of this is because I really do like Dory Freeman as a singer-songwriter. She's got a distinctive personality that she can easily convey with a lot of understated charm, but with real poise and maturity underscoring all of it. The first half of this album sees her heart getting broken a fair bit, but she's grounded enough just to sigh and know that the lovers are just as interchangeable to her in the end as she can be to them. And yet, she's sure enough of herself to realize at the end, they will have more regrets than she will, just being the lovers on the run. If anything, she's more just kind of exasperated with herself that she's falling for them, or that her history leaves the guys leaving fast and giving her more scars to just perpetuate the cycle. But for as much as that grounded, honest maturity anchors songs like Lovers on the Run, and especially That's Alright, and highlighting how her cheating partner's alcoholism will be far more damaging to him down the line after she's gone, and he'll have nobody to help him, there's a greater element of whimsy overall that comes through on songs like the acapella, Ern and Zori, Sneakin' Bitin' Dog, or the traditional tunes, Over There or Yonder Comes a Sucker. And I kind of appreciate that, it's a good vibe. And that's before we get the more introspective depression of Cold Waves, with that beautiful ragged fiddle section on the bridge, trying to find sanctuary and a partner and hoping that sort of depression doesn't pass down to her daughter, who is very much a presence in these stories, but never in a way that feels all that forced. And yeah, speaking of some of the production here, Teddy Thompson, he once again brings this really warm diversity of tones in order to support her, and while many of these melodies do hew pretty close to traditional progressions, Dory Freeman knows exactly how to bend them to feel rather distinct. For as short as this album is, it doesn't really waste any time repeating itself, from going to acapella to being just being supported by a snare drum on Yonder Comes a Sucker. That's it! And then from the jaunty banjo of Over There to the darker acoustic touch minor keyboard tones on cold waves and that's all right especially there with the subtle pedal steel i will say that there are a few touches of organ and arranged instrumentation that doesn't quite give the songs the fullness that they are properly intended i like the subtle hints of the strings in the background behind if i could make you my own but it doesn't quite fit as well on lovers on the run or the weedy organ behind i want to see the bright lights tonight it doesn't quite balance out that well with the richer guitar groove as well as i would personally prefer it's good there but i wish there was a little bit more body, but still, most of these are pretty damn solid in their own right, and I love that organic texture, especially on the fiddle. Hell, even on Turtle Dove, the one song I'd probably call a throwaway on this album, both lyrically and instrumentally, it still has that warm bass and more textured percussion, but it also does contribute to an album that for as much detail as Dory Freeman manages to cram in, with the inclusion of 
four covers and more than a few songs that have sparse instrumentation on a record that's flying under a half hour, well again, it's hard not to wish that there was more here, that the detail of the writing could be complemented by a little bit more by the instrumentation and production. Now, I'm not saying that someone like Dave Cobb is the right answer. There is something refreshingly homespun about the production that does kind of feel modern and tones that might get lost if they're going for something bigger like Dave Cobb stuff. Maybe just a few more original songs that'll let more of that songwriter side shine through because it really is so damn good. But again, this is a really easy album for me to like and praise. The writing is great. Dory Freeman has a sort of understated charisma that's really easy to like. And while I wish this was longer, what we do get is organic and charming enough to really stick with me. There really are some great tunes on this project. I don't quite think it's got the same weight as her debut, but there's a part of me that thinks the more defined and distinctive color of individual songs being a little bit more upbeat might stick with some audiences better regardless. This could get her more popularity. Regardless, I'm giving this a very light 8 out of 10 and definitely a recommendation. Highly recommend you pick up this album, you buy it properly because when it comes to independent indie grassroots country, it doesn't get much better than this. Check it out. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Not a lot to say, but hey, it was a short album. So I want you all to buy it because it's great. And I got the poll up there. I'm curious where more Dory Freeman fans actually will fall on this because the last review got a surprising amount of traction. I'm curious where you guys fall on it. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in supporting this channel and my scheduling process, link to my Patreon is right over there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, or I've done a little bit of reconfiguration there in terms of how the tiers are structured, and once a week on Saturdays for the higher tier contributors you get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. More details right over there, but till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.